Let's bring in a, a longtime uh, industry uh, watcher, participant for his thoughts. Joining us now, Bob Crandall, Robert Crandall, former CEO of American Airlines, former chairman of the AMR Group. Hey, Bob, uh, you wanted us to know that you actually warned Warren years ago. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Don't do yeah. it. And, and you said that he bought some U.S. Air and lost money, and then he finally succumbed to the popular notion that consolidation had made the industry a great business, and you still didn't think so. But it was a, it, wasn't it a pretty good business or much, a much better business until coronavirus? Well, of course it was, Joe, absolutely. This is, I mean, this is not about the airline business. This is about the capacity of the U.S. government <clears throat> to plan and implement a pandemic plan, <clears throat> which, they, which they haven't been able to do, and the consequence is the economy shut down. So, of course, the airline business is shut down, and it's going to stay shut down effectively until people feel safe gathering in small groups once again. What are you, what are you talking about? They, they haven't been able to put in a pandemic plan which would have allowed us to stay open. Like what? Like, for example, the, the plan, the, the, there was for, for, for many years, there was a pandemic planning facility on the National Security Council that's been eliminated. The CDC in Atlanta. Well, what would we have done? Much, much less. How would you have, what would we have done? What, uh, tell me how you would have stopped this. I think, I think what we would have done, Joe, is <clears throat> we would have had an adequate supply of masks. We would have had an adequate supply of protective equipment. So the fact is the impact would have been a whole lot less than it has been. Well, I don't, uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll, obviously, people are going to look at in hindsight of this, but, you know, I, you... you go to the UK or you visit Italy, France, so wherever you want to visit, and the mortality rates are per capita are much higher. So this is a, a global phenomenon, and, and to point to, uh, you know, a CDC plan that would have stopped this, I don't know, that, that, that doesn't ring true yeah, to me. You, you just put it, put it in, the, in the category of things you and I disagree on, Joe. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I guess we could have, you know, just, just had zero cases here then, Bob. So what... Um, from here on out, did, did you sell all your airline stock that you got over? I, I haven't. I haven't owned any airline stocks for many, many years. I owned some stocks when I ran American, and I thought then and told my employees, "I think this is a great business, makes a great contribution to the world, but I don't think it's an investable business." So, is it should it, should it be a utility, or how, how would you? How would you satisfy the, the uh, demand that may come back, may or may not? But what would, let's say before the coronavirus, how, people want to fly constantly. How do, you, how do you keep a viable airline industry operating because it's, it's for the public good? And, and obviously, people love flying all over. But when you have leisure time and you well, have the, that's what you want to do. People want to travel. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I do think the airline business is, in fact, a utility. It's really the only major transportation, intercity transportation system we have in the United States. It needs to be run like and regulated like and insured like a utility. It's just something we have to have. And the consequences, I think we need, need to deal with the reality that when we have something like this or when we have something like 911 and people are unwilling to travel or unable and unwilling to travel, that it's going to have a profoundly severe effect on, on aviation. And as a society, we need to do what we can to shelter aviation so it can come back when the public is, again, willing and, and wants to use it. Bob, the, the question I'd ask is, how, how would you go about doing that? And, and, and given that there have been arguments made, I think, quite successfully over the years, that actually the deregulation effort has helped keep prices down as dem and has democratized um, airline travel, despite obviously debates about whether there's been too much consolidation over the past couple of years, if you were to regulate it and turn it into utility, what do you think would happen? Well, I, I don't know that you would. I don't, I, I'm not sure as a utility, I think one of the things you do as a utility is you'd say, wait a minute, shutting this thing down absolutely is an insurable risk. The question is, who's going to be the insurer? It seems to me that society as a whole, if we only have one transportation system, that we have to collectively accept the notion that we're, that, that we're going to ensure that risk. 
Now, in effect, we have, because as the Congress has passed the various pieces of legislation, uh, effectively we have provided the resources to keep the industry viable. You see acres and acres and hundreds and hundreds of airplanes. They're not being destroyed. They're simply waiting until such time as the public uh, is ready to come back. So, so we have, in effect, done what I'm talking about. The fact is society has chosen to ensure to, to, to take the financial responsibility or a big piece of the financial responsibility for shutting the industry down. The question is, when we come back, what are, are, is, is private enterprise going to once again continue to invest in this business, or are we going to have to formalize the insurability of the continued operation of the airline industry?